All right, welcome to the video. We're going to look at um, what it's like to upgrade from Cubase to Studio One Pro 7 and if there's any concerns you might have. And uh, viewers of my channel, you probably know kind of what I like and the tools I need in my DAW. And you may have some similar type questions and uh, you may want to perhaps switch to Studio One. Um, it is, I found it to be cheaper and I didn't have to wait for a sale or a certain time of year to hopefully get a sale and upgrade. And you can use it for the entire year. Well, it's perpetual, so you can, you know, if you buy it for the $200, you can use it forever, but you get one year of free updates. So you get at least, I imagine, one big update, maybe several. And then you can choose if you want to update. So very straightforward. And um, for me, the upgrade was half the price. But uh, not that's not the main concern. The main concern is, will it have the tools I'm used to and what I need for my workflow? And so I'll just go over some of my concerns, some of my main concerns. The layout, very similar to Cubase, where you have your tracks up here. You can have your uh, editor down here and then these three buttons in the lower corner you can switch to mix have your mixer but really more important is that you can tear off using this button over here you can tear that off to another monitor resize the mixer just the way you want it and the same thing with the editor you can tear it off with the button over here and resize it on another monitor and then save your scene or your project main project file and that's how your layout will be from then on so that's what i did and uh, but for purposes of showing this i just brought them back in and you can also get them back in onto one monitor just by simply hitting those um, detach buttons again so very well thought out and laid out of course, Cubase has the tracks, the editor, and then it has on the side kind of its browser system. Same thing with uh, Studio One. And you can turn it on and off down here. And so you can access your instruments. You can do your effects from here. And it's all drag and drop. And they have a loops folder. And they come with a bunch of loops. And you can use Splice. So nowadays there's thousands and millions of different loops and instruments and whatnot and patterns. So they've got a deal with Splice and they give you a certain amount of free sounds. But if you join Splice, or I should say Splice, um, you can drag in a sound and they will find out of their database of like quarter of a million loops, they'll find similar sounds and then you can just drag them into your DAW and start working with them. So it's up to you if you want to buy a subscription with Splice or not. But if you're in production, I could see how that could be really handy. Say you want a certain type of guitar, right? Then you could just drag it in. It will find everything that's similar to that guitar really quickly. You can decide if you want to buy such a subscription if you need it. But I think just like um, ToonTrack has, you drag in one of the patterns for either drums or keyboards, and then it will find similar ones out of the hundreds and thousands of patterns they have. So that's the way to go in the future, because really when you're dealing with millions of patterns and loops, to, to try to go through them all and find something is nearly impossible now. So I think that's kind of the way the future's going for finding things quickly. Then you have your own files and you can make your own little um, subfolders here and you can find your loops and Studio One, different things here. So that is the browser. And so some of my concerns were the hotkeys and will they be similar to Cubase? And so if you go to Studio One, then go to Options or Keyboard Shortcuts, down at the bottom, you can have similar keyboard shortcuts to whatever you're used to working here. So that's very handy. And so, you know, I was able to just grab a loop, 
highlight it or select it, hit the P key, and it brought the looper around it and the um, timeline to the beginning, just like it would do in Cubase. So uh, as soon as I seen it do that, I, I knew the transition should be fairly easy. Um, another thing I really enjoyed and liked inside of Cubase is the ability to add filters on every track. And so in this case, you can add a filter. Input filter is very something I really like because um, it's if you have a big library or a big uh, sample player, often they have all these different hotkeys or uh, key switches. And if you're playing a pattern or playing live, sometimes your notes stray into your key switches area and they trigger unwanted key switches. So I always like to put filters on the channels, on the instruments that have key switches right next to the play area. Sometimes they're right next to the play area and you're always triggering those key switches when you don't want them. So input filter does that very simple and very easy. I would say even easier than in Cubase. In Cubase, you would have to find what the name of the key was, like a C1 or a C sharp two, and then put the other one here. This way you can just drag it, know where, where your different filtering is going to be, what you're filtering. So yeah, if you just play with it for a couple of minutes, you'll see how that works. So you have input filtering on your tracks, which is great. And oftentimes I want to select, or you have a MIDI, and they may be all set at 100 velocity, and you simply want to just go to something like a MIDI tool velocity and randomize them all. So again, that's very handy. There's quite a few MIDI tools here. I would say that maybe Cubase, uh, with you know how long it's been around and all its dedicated MIDI functions, is perhaps has more tools, but I don't know Studio One completely. Maybe you can buy some add-ons, but there are quite a few tools for changing time, transposing, uh, pitch filter. Um, you know, there's quite a few things you can do, quite a few MIDI tools to work with. So, and there's always one way or several ways to do things with MIDI, so. All right, uh, so the hotkeys, I'm just looking at my little list I made for the video here. You can filter. Um, oh, one thing that is really nice when you're using big sample libraries uh, like uh, VSL, they have so many articulations to be able to go in and just switch to sound variations and you can add any type of cc values here you could just use this little interface and add them here so you can add anything you want to be uh, on a tab down here but one of the great things is sound variations so um, just there's so many articulations in the VSL and they have all subfolders. So you can end up with hundreds of uh, different articulations. So with uh, sound variations tab, VSL and most libraries I think now are built in. So they have all their mapping built right into Studio One. And I can just find them down here in the list. So I have these selected, say I want these to all be short notes. I can just go up here, short notes, and I have all my variations, staccato. Now those notes are staccato. I can make this long note down here. I can say, well, I want that to be maybe a legato repetition or a long note. You get the idea. Very simple to work with complex articulations inside a studio once. That's a big plus. I'll move this to the side. So, yeah, very, um, very, I would say if I was to compare it um, very simply, I would say that uh, Studio One is like a streamlined, more modern Cubase. And I think they're updating quicker. They just seem to be more on the ball as far as you know, they get some feedback and make a change and it just seems to be 
um, a system with their whole ecosystem of their videos online, their tutorials, some really great tutorials. So yeah, there's really nothing missing so far that um, I can think of. The way they handle MIDI inputs and outputs, so if you select a track, you can say, well, say for Opus, I want it to be played by Scalar. So you would just go here and select your Scalar track or whatever. And it just works by MIDI uh, channels. So in some regards, that's even easier than Cubase. It's just really kind of straightforward. Uh, I know in Cubase, if I wanted to have over eight uh, separate instruments inside of uh, Rapid Composer, there was only at the time eight inputs. Now there's 16. Um, but in here, there's like limited because they do it using MIDI channels. And, you know, you can just each channel has 16 outputs and you can have many different um, inputs for every track. So really great there. Um, in Studio One, they have a system where you create a track and they have the chord track, they have uh, marker tracks, they have arranger tracks, um, you know, all the type of tracks that um, really Cubase has, folder tracks. Um, one thing I could say is that when you're using the chord track, say down here, and if we go and um, select something and say you want to know where the scale is we know in cubase you can have it set to have your interface show you colors for parts pitch velocity it's very similar to cubase and you can do the same thing for scale so you can set a scale say in this case c major and it will show you if i take one of these notes and if I move them out of the scale, but it's snapping. But uh, I think that should be red if it goes out of the scale. I'm not sure why that's set to say scale color, pitch, velocity. But if you notice, they're missing chord. So in Cubase, you can have them. Uh, so you have any note that, if you set it to chord in Cubase, any note you have here, if you move it, you will see that um, it turns red, blue, or green. And it's very handy, so you know if you're out of the scale in the chord, or if you're in the scale chord, or, or a note of the chord, or if you're in the scale or you're out of both. So they have three colors. Right now, in this case, they just have scale and out of scale. And uh, I'm not sure why it's showing all blue. Maybe it's because it's set to snap into just there. Oh, because it's chromatic. If I go to C major, okay, there. So you notice there's only two colors here, right? So you're either in the scale or you're out of scale, depending where you move. So very simple to understand. But Cubase, so really that whole speech I just made, basically Cubase has three colors. So you know where your chords are and your scale and your out of chord and scale notes are. It would be excellent if um, Studio One could add that third option. Well, maybe it's a fifth option. Uh, with chords. And I think they just added the scale color option a year or so ago if I was watching some tutorial videos. So I'm sure they'll probably add the chord there because why not? That just makes it so much simpler for composing music really quick. But right now if you have Rapid Composer you have that functionality inside of Rapid Composer where you know exactly where your each measure chord notes should be scale notes and all that. So there are simple ways around that. Let's see, what else? Um, they do have it so that you can create a track with MIDI, but you don't necessarily have to create a audio channel with that track. 
I want to look more into that, but I think that's interesting because oftentimes you may want to have 20 different tracks of various MIDI, but you don't want to clutter up your mix track with, you know, 20 channels when you don't need audio channels just for tracks of different MIDI versions, right? So some forward thinking there. And uh, yeah, overall, I think the transition to um, the Studio One is uh, going smoothly. Just a quick video to uh, let you know um, that I'm trying to get up to speed with Studio One as soon as possible. I like to experiment a lot, so it takes a while to know where all the tools are so that you can really move quickly. Um, I've also um, upgraded uh, to the Contact 8.6, which I had mentioned earlier, and I'll have some interesting comments about that. And if I just click off of here, we can see that all the new tools, which are stackable, so you can stack an uh, arpeggiator with a chord builder and have a velocity curve all affect whatever instrument that you choose to bring in here. And if you look, I've got some new instruments that we'll be talking about fantasy, um, indie, and colors. Um, not terribly impressed with indie 2. Um, I just thought it seemed a little rushed to me. Um, colors is really interesting. I want to look more into that. Fantasy is a great little um, interface and it seems to be worth the price. They have a half off sale right now so that's why usually I get my Sono Kinetic at half price and it comes in handy when you want to mix in those great um, real phrases with some of your MIDI tracks. I'll have more to say about that. And also a few more tune track uh, products that I'll be talking about for Today, though, I think that's it. Kind of a rushed video. Um, I am trying to update and get everything flowing back to my regular routine where I can show off some of these new um, ideas and start to experiment with, um, you know, how I normally do things. All right. So hope you had a chance to make music today and we'll catch you in the next video.